Hey there! Here's another wiki trivia video, where I read the trivia section of Smash Ultimate wiki pages and talk about things I thought were neat. Today's video will start with Dr. Mario and finish this row with Ganondorf, and also throw in Mewtwo just cause. As is tradition, today's first prompt is a model gap fact, this time regarding Dr. Mario. If you look into his coat, you can see near his waist that there's a gap in the model, right around here. I've gone over quite a few of these types of facts in the series now. Are people interested in them? I don't know, I guess I'll keep mentioning them anyways. Next, the prompt mentions how Dr. Mario's Mega Vitamins, which I guess is what they're called rather than just pills, all actually start out with the same color when you spawn them in. That is, the first frame in which they're spawned, it comes in a solid red color. And then in the following frame, its true color combination is applied. This only seemed to be the case for Dr. Mario's Neutral Special, as when he used his side taunt, the pill, or Mega Vitamins color, is already decided on the first frame that it appears. Also, I'm going to add this in here while I'm editing, but we will touch up on that bit later in the video, as I'm not entirely correct here. Considering that this happens for only one frame, it's practically impossible to notice in real time. Even under the effects of the timer, or when training mode was at one fourth the speed, I couldn't really catch this happening. Though when you combine those two, it does become a little bit noticeable, but only very slightly. So, you know, it's very easy to miss, so I think that's cool. Next, the prompt mentions how Pichu's fast fall speed has the lowest fall speed increase of the entire cast, only increasing the speed by 31.579%. No idea why the number is like that, but it is. I reckon it's because it's kept way more similar to Pichu's fast fall increase in Melee, which was 31.6% in that game. And that's the only game whose fall speed increases were consistently weirdly numbered throughout the cast. Lots of decimals and whatnot. Well, that and Smash 64. Every game after Melee has had a fairly consistent increase number throughout the cast. And in Smash Ultimate, that number is a 60% increase from the base fall speed. The only characters with a greater number are Link and Joker, each with a 90% increase. And there's a few characters with a lower increase, like Piranha Plant, Ryu, and Ken, with only a 40% increase. And there's two characters whose increase changes based on some certain states they can go into, like Sephiroth, who goes from 60% to 52.83% when he's in his winged form, and Hero, who goes from 60% to 33% when he's under the effects of Accelerodal, thus putting him the closest to Pichu, you know, using tools that are within the character's own kit. These are the types of numbers that are a bit hard to visualize on their own, since it's a difference of change in fall speed, meaning it's based around what their normal fall speed is and doesn't truly reflect the speed on its own in a vacuum. Next, the prompt mentions how in Falco's character showcase video, you can actually see hitbox visualizations for a few of his moves, specifically Falco's blaster lasers, and his Falco phantasm. It's the red visualizer right here. It's a bit hard to see, but it's definitely there and it's very likely just an error that went unnoticed in the whole process. I mean, I definitely didn't notice it without the help of this wiki prompt, and I think it's really funny. Let's move on to Marth now, who actually has a few audio errors that are pointed out. First being that his side taunt still has two sword swing sound effects, despite the taunt being shortened to one swing. In the past, it did have two swings, but I guess they just forgot to adjust it when they made the change. I mean, I guess you can argue that the second swing sound fits this part of the animation, but I don't know, this is less him swinging the sword and more of him just sort of putting it away. It doesn't really feel like it fits entirely. Also, fun tip, if you ever want to hear a certain sound effect but the character's voice clip keeps getting in the way and you don't want to have to go all the way to the options to turn the voice clips down, just use a metal box as that removes the character's voice. And the second is how the back hit of his up tilt will always play the tipper sound effect, regardless of whether or not it actually got the tipper. You can hear that the sour spot sound is quieter than the normal sweet spot tipper sound, but it's still the same beefy audio clip, whereas normal sour spot hits are way lighter and more, you know, bland. Next, a prompt mentions how Marth's crouching animation will change to a variant from an older game when he's holding an item. And the change is, as usual, very obvious, especially here because of how he sort of transitions into that old position. The thing that's interesting is that this isn't the case for all items. I tested everything that you can carry, and it was generally consistent among the item types. Yeah, it's pretty easy to miss, but look here. When you hover over an item, a certain category is given to them. Like how the Pokeball is a helping item, or how the Bomber is an exploding item, or how the Smart Bomb is a throwing item, and I guess not an exploding one. 
All of the item types that I tested caused this change in animation except for all of the battering items and all of the shooting items, which did not cause a change. There were also three other exceptions. The motion sensor bomb, the banana peel, and the boomerang. None of them caused a change in the crouch, despite the fact that all other throwing items worked. I'm not entirely sure what's so unique about these three throwing items specifically, or honestly why this happens for some items and not others in general, but that's how it is. Also, the prompt mentions how this characteristic of crouching animations also happens for Lucina, who does the same thing as Marth, Young Link, who sort of has his body at more of an angle than usual, Roy, who's similar to Marth, Krom, who uses Roy's previous crouch animation, not his own since, you know, he's new to this game so he doesn't have a previous animation to borrow from, and Wolf, who goes from a normal crouch to a much more feral and frankly cooler looking one. And from what I tested, the same exceptions of which items did and didn't cause this to happen were consistent throughout. Next, with Lucina, there's another model gap prompt, where if you look at her during animations like jumping and see behind her belt, there's a very obvious split in her stomach. Like a big cut or something. <laughs> I don't know what kind of surgery or battle happened to leave this scar behind, but it looks pretty painful. Alright, let's move on to Young Link, who's actually got quite a few. First, a prompt talks about how the cyan tunic ult of Young Link actually has leggings on. You can see that the color here is a type of beige green, or I guess barf green, I don't know. And the texturing on them is unique from usual, giving them more of a cloth feel, so you know it's intentional. This is likely because this alt is meant to reference Breath of the Wild Link, so they gave him pants to cover it. I don't know why they chose this green color, but maybe it's because if they did beige, like Breath of the Wild Link's pants, it might blend in too much and look weird. I don't know. I mean, I guess it's close enough. And yes, for you loyal fans, this is something I've covered on the channel before, but I figured that was long ago enough to where I might as well mention it here again. Next, if you look at Young Link's hair, you'll see that everything looks normal, but some shadows sort of block you from seeing more, you know? Well, since Young Link's hair undergoes a lot of physics, under certain states, like when taking knockback, if you look at his hair, now you can very clearly see that his sideburns just aren't connected to anything. Which looks awful weird. Also, while we've got this angle, if you look at his boots from the bottom, you can see some gaps by the boots' cuffs. Next, the prompt talks about a little glitch with the animation of the Kokiri sword after Young Link uses his up tilt. When transitioning back to the idle animation after using the move, the sword will do an unusual and unnecessary 180 degree spin in Link's hand. It's actually not hard to notice even in real time, and it's just kinda odd and out of place. And alongside this, it's mentioned how when you use the hookshot to grab the ledge, while normally it looks kinda fitting, not quite, the chain hangs out of the hole a bit, but it's still kinda there. But the frame that you pull towards the ledge, the chain gets completely disconnected from the hole up until you start grabbing the ledge, in which case they're completely disconnected in general. It doesn't look terrible. Like, the chain here is matched with the chains that are, like, inside the hookshot, but considering that's not how the item normally works, as we can see when you miss a grab, it's still clearly not right. Next, it's mentioned how, under certain conditions, you can actually see Navi fly onto the screen for Young Link's side taunt. If you go frame by frame in the camera options, you won't see anything like this. It'll just be one frame of no Navi, and then bam, she's there. However, if you go into training mode and slow the time down, preferably to one fourth time, then you can very briefly see Navi move towards the spot that she normally spawns in, as if she's going there from off screen or something. It's kind of weird. The wiki suggests that this implies that her model is stored off screen, which makes sense to me, but I don't really know too much about that kind of stuff. I just find it really interesting how she does this motion when the game is slowed down, but in frame by frame she just appears suddenly, no transition or anything. Also when you slow down from the timer, Navi will still move at a normal speed, which is actually kind of funny in its own right, but no you can't use this for that purpose. What you can use is Special Smash's slow option, as this causes all things in the match to be slow, meaning it's effectively the training mode half speed setting. Here we can see Navi moving up to Link's hand. So now if we go into the camera's frame by frame mode, we can catch Navi in the motion right here. Also while we're talking about funny taunt things, I had mentioned this in the past video as well, but for Link's down taunt with the milk, the cap that he opens at the very beginning just kind of flies upward and then disappears, which is actually fairly noticeable. What's funny though is that in this slowed down setting, if you look in frame by frame, instead of the cap just disappearing, 
there's a single frame where you can see it right here, and very small. And this doesn't happen in the match at normal speed, which is kind of like before, so that's funny. And while I didn't think about it initially, all of this testing shows me that taunts can, I guess, add extra frames and animations if they're done when slowed down. So I wanted to see if maybe now we could catch Dr. Mario's Mega Vitamin Taunt having a red placeholder pill, like his neutral special. And in doing this, for the very, very first frame that the taunt starts, it's... Okay, it's really hard to see. But there is an extremely small red Mega Vitamin that can be found here. And then the frame after, it becomes much more noticeable and whatever color it's meant to be. So, the fact from the beginning of this video actually did include Dr. Mario's taunt. And no, I guess I didn't actually need to use the slow motion in order for this to work. As you can see, this microscopic Mega Vitamin, even in a normal match, I just didn't notice it at first due to its palpable tininess. I honestly think this is just hysterical and pretty interesting. And lastly for Young Link, it's mentioned how his wall jump animation doesn't actually have him touching the wall. We can most easily see this on the training mode stage, where the wall is perfectly flat. He's actually pretty far from it. The effect that plays after the jump sorta covers that space, but yeah, he's not there. Here's what a normal animation looks like, for example. Nice and neatly touching the wall. I'm not sure if other characters share this trait with Young Link, but it's pretty amusing. Alright, let's finally move on to Ganondorf. And the starting fact is one that mentions how, in a Famitsu column on January 2019, Sakurai mentions how Ganondorf was the most used fighter in Elite Smash. And that is what we call a Ganondorf sweep, fellas. Of course, this was specifically for Elite Smash, which, you know, seems kind of weird, as Cloud was the most used fighter overall, and there's no telling what the numbers are now, over three years later, and with DLC added, but in my heart, it's forever the Ganondorf sweep. Though I am curious about what the data is nowadays. Next, a prompt mentions how Ganondorf's cape looks weird when descending on a ladder. You'll notice how his cape moves upwards while you descend, which is just an intuitive way for it to act here, but after a certain distance covered, the cape's position will just reset, and go through the same motions again. It's like the animation is looping for whatever reason, which looks jarring. Also, this is not dependent on how long you've been descending, but rather how far you've descended, as when I slow or speed up the descent, the animation's loop also changes to fit. And lastly for Ganondorf, if you go to the Mute City SNES stage and use invincibility of some kind to get onto the track, and then spam his up taunt, even after the invincibility has gone away, he won't be getting hit by the track. Yeah, his spins cause him to float a bit, and since you can cancel taunts now, and thus loop them early, he never touches the ground. It's actually really funny, though not super effective, given how the road is still moving. So even if you don't take damage, you're pretty likely to get thrown into the blast zone anyways. But I still think this is absolutely hysterical. I tried it on Port Town Aero Dive as well, and it's just kind of weird there. The tracks are way more scattered and diverse, so it's hard to stay on it for any period of time anyways. Though this last section before the loop was a good spot, and here, yes, the same trick worked. Though the moment the elevation of the road goes up, you get hit, so it's not really perfect, but hey. And now let's end the video off with Mewtwo. First, it's mentioned how Mewtwo is the only character whose victory grunts and laughter and other such victory sounds. Mewtwo wins! Mewtwo wins! <laughs> are emitted from the English sound test. Now, a lot of stuff is emitted from these sound tests. They're honestly incredibly inconsistent with this. But I thought this was interesting because it also mentioned how there's a few languages where Mewtwo will just be muted during his victory poses. Those languages include... Spanish? German? Dutch? And Russian? I guess this is because the game incorrectly loaded its clips from the Japanese version or something. It's weird that it's specifically these four language options, though. Next, if Mewtwo air dodges while he's facing the left, both before and after he disappears, you'll see that he's facing away from the screen. And he'll stay like this before very suddenly turning back to normal, further showing that him facing away from the screen is not right. Once again, this is very likely just a carryover from past games and they forgot to fix it up. Also, this is another one of those cases where it's kind of interesting seeing an animation play out in slow motion. 
I've never really seen any of his like disappearing appearing types of animations in slow motion, but it's kind of funny seeing his body contort weirdly. Right, and lastly for today's video, you know how Mewtwo's eyes become green when he uses Disable? Well, it's mentioned how, under certain effects, like being attacked by an attached Pikmin, Mewtwo's eyes will turn green here as well, and they'll stay green throughout the duration of this effect. If you use Disable again, it'll look normal, and then it'll transition back into his normal eye color, before suddenly turning green again. This visual happens with other effects, like the curse from Joker's Aha slash Aegon, and other effects throughout the game. See, these effects give characters a unique, usually more distraught facial expression that follows them around. So this basically just means, for Mewtwo's unique, distraught face, they just chose to change his eyes, which I think actually looks kind of neat. Also, yes, that means that the facial glitch with Luigi that I mentioned in the first wiki video can also happen when a Pikmin is attached to you. So if you want to learn more about that piece of trivia, as well as anything else, be sure to catch the other videos in the series, and while you're at it, you might as well just watch everything on the channel ever, and also subscribe and all that stuff. So, that'll be it for today's video. I hope you all found everything interesting today. I'm having a lot of fun with this new series, and it's been getting a lot of great reception, so I'll be sure to keep it up as usual. So keep your eyes peeled on the channel and catch any new episodes whenever they drop. Also, since this is less user submission based compared to my past series, you know, since I'm just reading things from the wiki that were already written, things are a bit different. But of course, if you've got any comments, like certain trivia I didn't touch on that you think would be fitting, or any trivia of your own for future characters, feel free to add them. Like, this isn't very concrete or anything. If in a future video I'm going over, say, Lucas, and I see a comment in one of these videos about a piece of trivia regarding Lucas that isn't in the wiki, I might just throw it into that video just because I can, you know? So basically, have fun in the comments and whatnot, and I'll work with things if I can. So with that, I'd like to thank my patrons Scully, Burbo, Rain, 7700, Sick and the Dank, and everyone else for their support. Stay casual, and I'll see y'all later.